on the record. Good afternoon. This is the Board of Standards and Appeals zoning calendar. Decision items. Item number 13, 2016 1217 BC, 45 Southgate Court, Brooklyn. Hello, Eric Palanik on behalf of Jay Goldstein. Oh, okay. So uh, this just needs to be reopened to receive the amended objection sheet. So for a motion to reopen. Chair Promutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. So consider the revised objection sheet received. And then for a motion to close? Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. And we already approved this back in early April, so a motion to grant. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Continued hearing items. Item number 14, 216, 15BZ, 205 West Fordham <coughs> Road, the Bronx. Yeah. Go ahead. Give me the rest of it. <coughs> Hi, Eric Palatnik. Yeah. I just uh, passed up revised plans uh, and the zoning analysis that uh, addresses some of the comments from the board's discussions yesterday. Uh, we attended your review session yesterday, <coughs> and uh, we know that you're familiar with the efforts that we've made with Department of Transportation, and thank you to the board. You were the one that helped facilitate that meeting. Uh, with us here today is uh, a cadre of consultants, and uh, okay. well, this Frank Fosiato. And last week, you may remember, I constantly kept calling Frank Chuck, and uh, that's because Frank's partner Chuck is here, and he's right <laughs> here with us as well. And uh, they'll both be speaking to you about the the traffic and the layout. And also with us is Andrew from High Point Engineering, who's the engineer that designed the site in its current layout and, and set up. Uh, the most substantial change that we've made to the plans that you have in front of you right now are addressing the concerns that the board raised yesterday with respect to the facing materials of the building, with respect to landscaping on the property, uh, and with, it was the landscaping, it was the facing materials, and it was setting the building back off of West Fordham Road to provide a landscaped area in the front. Uh, that the chair was concerned about. And we apologize that we did not include that in our original submission. We all got so caught up in what we were doing with Department of Transportation, uh, and the submission went in during the uh, Good Friday, Easter, Passover break, and I was not in the office. And when it went in, it did not go in uh, with the landscaping or the setback of the building. So, Madam Chair, that was your specific request, and that was why we added that back. Well, uh, it was actually two setbacks, right? Um, and I don't know if two feet's enough, but I see where you did that, but it was also to pull away from the property line on the side, because otherwise you have an inaccessible rear wall that cannot be maintained. Okay, that's the, the reason we would like not to do that. Let me explain why. I know, I know why. that, but I don't, <laughs> I don't think it makes any sense. Um, as we talked about, before we have many of these old, many of these old garages um, that were built to the parking to the property line, and then when we see that it's covered in graffiti or the pointing is completely fallen out, the response is, "Oh, we can't get back there because we don't own the property." So that's exactly what would happen here. Not to mention the details, such as it is of putting a fence. Right up against the masonry wall. Well, that, that we did. That was an original request to the board. You may not recall from one of the first hearings. So to that's put up a fence. To, to put the fence there, yes. That's so that's, nice. that's why we did that. fence right up against a wall, a masonry wall or anything. Well, we were trying wall. to figure out what the board. The reason, there's a couple of reasons why we're, we'd like to discuss not setting back that wall. And I know that, Madam Chair, you have the reason for the graffiti and whatnot. Not just graffiti, you have to maintain your building. It's uh, the maintenance of the building, there's a scuttle to the roof. We can get down to the side of the building oh, to, maintain, to, maintain to maintain to the side of the building. That's the excuse we get every single time. We can't even hang a ladder down because we're trespassing and we can't get permission from the neighbor because we don't this, even know who they are. The board has approved a lot of lot line buildings in their day. I mean, this is not the first but lot line building. This is a building. gas station, and we often have 
issues about gas stations and the fact that they're very unsightly right. and they're badly maintained I'm and stuck. all that stuff. So why walk into a problem? How much would you want to see? How much distance Enough would you want so to see? so a human can get back there. That's what it was saying before. A thin, a thin human? Sorry? A very thin human? <laughs> You can hire a specifically thin human, but it can't be so thin that it's not a human. <laughs> this might help sway you a little bit. Mm, nope. it, it might not, but it might. <laughs> Listen, the, the, the convenience store, by the time you're done with all of the, the, the deductions for everything, the retail space in the convenience store, it's not the biggest one in the marketplace, and that's why we're hemming and hawing. It's, it leaves you without 800 and change square feet. So every foot that we take off of the building, it, it, it impacts the retail, and the retail in combination with the gas is how you're making your money. Here. No, but so, so here's the reality. The site is a long, skinny site. It is. You're asking all of this stuff from this long, skinny site. Not that it's, much. Yeah, you are. You're putting now four pumps. You have this We had five pump. originally. Great. So that's so it's so it's progress. And there were there were there. five in the original approval from ten years ago. So it's 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 come the original approval we're looking at it today. Okay. It's a new but it's come down a little bit. Maybe I gave you the pictures, these pictures. And the reason I gave them not just to, just to not just show you how beautiful West Fordham Road is uh, in the sun, summer morning, but rather to also show you the landscape, the trees that are at the corner where it's which is the area that you are concerned about no, the back of the building. No, that belongs to someone else, and they could develop it at any time with whatever it is they want to develop, right? As of they, right. They could, but it's not easily accessible. You cannot easily visible. rely on somebody else's property for anything. All right, and so still, it's trespassing onto whoever owns that property for you to maintain your property. All right. And oh, I will provide a thin person's access to clean the back of so the building. So it's a thin person. So it's got to be 30 inches or a human can't work back there. 30 inches? That's yeah. thick. That's, th that's no, two and a half feet. No, that's not a thick person. That's a thin person working back there. What is that, Andrew? Does that uh, impact? Well, I'll let you talk about that in a second. Well, whatever I'll it is, Andrew. you're going to have to adjust the planning on the site. And if it means losing another pump, I don't know what to say. The site's too small for you to do all this stuff. Well, it's... I mean, a lot I of I don't times think it's too small. The, the 30 inches from the rear is is your desire to not have it landscaped, to, to have it not have to have access, which we're, we're going you know, to accommodate you on it. But the rest of the site, it's it's a, it, the site works. I mean, we sat with Department of Transportation. We went through it at them ad nauseum. They, they went through it from every single angle. They looked at the sidewalks. They looked at the street system. They looked at the operations that we're doing. And they came back and they said, but Fine, we're okay with it. Different criteria than the board looks like at, and I'm still looking at this plan where there's this continued refusal to show landscaping all the way around on the perimeter. No, there's right? no there's no refusal. There's a reason why. Andrew, why don't you come up and at least address the landscaping issue, and uh, we'll go from there. The state your name for the record. My name is uh, Andrew Stewart from High Point Engineering. Uh, the reason we uh, haven't shown the landscaping along that one portion uh, closer to the convenience store is because with the parking spaces there, uh, parking code requires a minimum 24-foot clear backup space. Uh, if we put continue that three-foot wide land, uh, curved landscape strip along that um, the rest of the rear, the handicapped parking stall wouldn't be able to make a backup with that 20-foot for minimum clearance. So, so then that just tells me the handicap stalls in the wrong place. I mean, again, the site, it's not your fault, right? You're being instructed by your clients and so on, but it tells me that in order to meet the requirements of the board for a parking, I mean, for a garage or, sorry, whatever, a gasoline pumping there. station and convenience store, there are certain requirements for buffering from adjacent adjacent properties. You have to do it. And so if it means reducing the size of whichever thing, that's what it means. That's but Madam Chair, there's, every, you've, there's been a lot of gas stations in front of you in New York City. I'm looking at the plan. You've asked for landscaping sure. around it. We're, we're giving you a what you're, we're giving everywhere we can, not because you're asking, because you, but because we should. That one strip that we're talking about, 
is one small portion out of the entire perimeter of the property that we're, we're landscaping. I mean, you've had other gas stations. I've never once seen you ask a gas station to landscape the entire perimeter of the property, we especially here. We're back, back up against, in the back of us, theoretically, if you drove past the property with anybody other than the group of people that's in this room, and you said to them, what's behind the area that we're talking about, unequivocally, every single one of them would say, dense forest. Yes, but that's somebody else owns. But that city land back there, it leads down to the park. That's not, city yeah, behind us there. I have a question. Portion. Have a question. That no, that's private land. We can check. No, I, that portion, I think it's, I'll double check that, but it leads down, that's down to the ball field that you were talking about that's behind us. Way. We'll find out who owns it, but we are, landscaping the heck out of the site. I mean, everything that I'm saying, we're coming back with the site, it's not the right site. And I, I would just like to say again that, I mean, it's worth repeating. A previous board acted upon it, and they approved it. And it's, it's a special permit, and we're providing Every condition the board has asked for, we're doing. You want a setback, we're doing. You want a setback in the rear, I just begrudgingly accepted the setback in the rear. You wanted <laughs> landscaping around the top portion of it, we gave you the landscaping around the top. You didn't like the pump layouts originally, there were five, you said there were too many, the site was too small, we made it four. We had them angled a certain way, Andrew and his expert opinion had it. You said you didn't like that, we made them straight. Then after we did all that, you said this is horrible, it's a traffic nightmare, somebody's gonna get killed, go to the experts in the field, go to DOT, you set up the meeting with DOT. Chuck is here. He's going to testify to that in a second. Sat, met with DOT. DOT came back to Chuck and he's going to tell you in his words and said, A-okay, we're fine with it. Make these minor modifications to the site program and we're okay with the movement of vehicles in the street system. So we're trying, we really are trying. I'm not trying to say no to everything you say. I'm trying to say yes. But I mean, we're also trying to build something that people are going to come in, pump up gas and give the owners money and they're going to have a lucrative business. So it's a trying to do both. I have a question. Um, whether it's a handicap parking or any other parking, I'm right. assuming you will have the same issue with the vehicle backing up with the, with regards yes, to landscaping? The, yes, the code uh, requires if it's the uh, head-in parking, you need a 24-foot okay. minimum backup. The question is, since there is no parking required for this, you're providing six. Can it not be reduced to five and then you can still provide a little bit of the buffering? It's it's up to the boards. Can I have your zoning? Do you have your zoning analysis? Um, I pass all those up. I think I might have passed up all the zoning analysis. I just want to double check the zoning calculation. I probably passed. Can you keep yours? I can steal that. Um, yeah, I just want to double. So you're right. There is no parking requirement. We listen. We'd be happy to take the spot away, but I don't know what we're accomplishing the spaces are good for us they're good for the customers they're they're good it's good to have the parking we always hear have the parking this one little strip that we're talking about it's just one small part i mean there's other ways we could address it if the board wants to see landscaping we could put a living wall along that that could do it that doesn't take away from the, the space dying we could put a decorative wall up <laughs> we could put a decorative wall up that that has a taller well living wall dying i mean we're landscaping the heck out of this thing like the jungle on the rest of it so if the living wall's going to die then the whole left side of the site is not going to bode so well no. but uh <laughs> but we can we, we could put a decorative wall up there if the board is concerned about any any headlights or anything that may shoot over to the other side i mean we're happy to doll up the site and you know do whatever the board is asking uh, as far as that goes but we really don't we're here with the four pump island request because the four pump islands generate enough traffic to the site to support the convenience store they both work in symmetry with each other and that's why we're kind of trying to dig in our heels a little bit on what we're trying to do and we know the madam digging, but I'm trying to not create something that the that the board ends up fighting with in the future. We rarely have new gas stations. Almost everything we have is an existing 1945 gas station, and now we're dealing with the fact that it doesn't have landscaping. It's a blight in the neighborhood. But you've we're the landscaping the heck out of this. You asked us to dig, to make it nice. We're making it nice. You asked us to put fencing. We're putting right. fencing. You asked us landscaping. We're f landscaping. I mean everything. You asked us to safety. Wanted to make sure the safety was okay. DOT checked it and said they were okay with it. We're doing everything we possibly can. I get that in your gut you're saying if you, uh, you know, if you had a bigger square or site, maybe it could be a little bit better, but it's not that, 
It's a long site. It's on a road that, that it's going to get all local traffic. Everybody coming in and out of here is all going to be locals. What's that have to do with the landscape? Well the, well, the point is simply that just the, the movement of the site and cars moving around the site and all of that jazz is all going to be by people who are in there every single week. It's going to be the same customers coming so in. So what's that got to do with the landscape? It doesn't have anything to do with the landscaping. I'm just throwing in a circulation so. discussion. Okay. But going back to the landscaping, we can do that wall if you're trying to shade, to, to shield the site from behind us, we can definitely do a more decorative wall. We already were doing a brick wall with an iron with, uh, with the, the fence on top. We could certainly put in a, a much nicer wall at that point that gives the shielding that you're looking for. I don't see why. <laughs> could, could you put something um, landscaping maybe from the northwesternmost corner to the angle at which it starts to get more narrow? Probably up to this point. Um, and then you would just at least limit here. the amount of the perimeter yeah. that's not yeah. landscape? Well, like, the problem in putting it there is that you have the uh, handicap loading stall that is a minimum of eight foot width. Is what's that the Because it looks like you have it as um, like an irregular, you know, like a trapezoid. So what's that extra portion? If you look the, on the sheet, um, Z-002, there's a dimension on the striped area. Yeah. So the striped area next to the handicap stall, the loading stall, mm -hmm. calls out eight foot width. So it needs the minimum eight foot for the loading stall. The extra little triangle is just because it's, it's unusable space, so they, they keep that as extra expanded space for the loading stall. It's just striped. It I think is. that's what you're talking about. So you could, yeah. you could start that at that point start a landscaping strip that goes straight up to the corner um, well like they do said it's not needed they do need to access that uh, side of the building towards the rear lot line um, as shown on sheet um, Z why can't they access that from inside the building and then go to the the building light uh, doesn't it 30-inch wide rear, and then they can walk around. Or now the they can walk they around from this side. They could walk around now through the back. Yeah, why do you need that back. side thing? We could. Um, we would have to look at how much we could back there, because we do need to keep, like, we probably need to keep a 30-inch back there as well, because there are the electric meter and panels, and there's a, uh, a ladder for roof access on that side of the building. It's shown on the uh, building elevations, Z009. We could try. We could look at moving it to the back. It I'm depends on the... I know. Eric Palatnik, I'm suggesting moving the electrical and everything he's talking about that's encumbering you on that side to the rear. The, the board is just asking us to keep it 30 inches in the rear, so maybe you could kill two birds with one stone. Um, Not actually kill them, just... We can look at it. It might be difficult right now um, based on the floor plan layout and the size needed for the utility area and the internal connection to those panels. It might be um, difficult to fit that back there. Well, uh, I know the floor plan is shown on Z008. Con Ed won't so. go to any place that's narrower than 30, 36 inches. Yeah, the, the Con Ed does have their own uh, design requirements for this. Hence the reason you need room for workers to work in places. Well, I'm saying we could look at. I mean, you're not gonna, even I, I mean, we could look at the landscaping back there, but it's even on that side of the building, it's not really, it's not in a visual spot where you're gonna see the landscaping. I would say. Well, you're not gonna. So the thing is, so it, yeah. so the land, the site adjacent is lot one on the block, and it's owned by the co-op that that has that building. So at any time, they could decide to develop that site, right? And so this is them being shielded from the gas station. From the gas station, I understand. And that's the whole point, that, that you should be shielding from no, the we, residential neighbors. We, and nobody is, listen, we're, uh, we're not arguing against the board for trying to shield. The problem we're all confronting is you're asking for trees or plantings that take up XYZ distance. And Why not? The wall takes up, or or a fencing material that could see the shield serve the same purpose to shield from a potential future development, and we could even add something in if it's a future development comes, we'll come back or something. But yeah. for for some to guard against what you're concerned about, we would like to do some kind of wall or some kind of screening or something that would achieve our goal of being able to maintain the same number of parking spaces and still satisfy the board and making sure for that one portion to 
God, it doesn't look like you're talking about that many feet, that we could fill it in with something decorative. I'm sure Andrew can come up with some kind of decorative wall that our clients will complain about that's too expensive that we could provide to you that'll be very aesthetically pleasing, which our clients will say is too expensive, and I'm sure it'll be beautiful. Cassandra has good taste. I don't like it. <laughs> what a vine. What about a what? A vine? There are all sorts of living it's walls. It's for a vine. You know, it doesn't just grow. Yeah, but right? there are living walls, and, and the walls living, that are... No, no, no. Living walls barely live when they're expensively maintained in the middle of we, the street. We did right? a Taco Bell years ago, which I could show the board pictures. <laughs> it's built on Union Turnpike and, and, and Northern Boulevard that has decorative walls around it, separating it from the residential next to it. That is stunning. The site is gorgeous, and it was a board case, and it's got beautiful decorative <laughs> walls on it that, that are precast walls. And if we could put two of them up here, or, or the panels, whatever we need, I, you can get the same aesthetic look. <laughs> or you get an anesthetic look. Anesthetic look. Anesthetic one look. of the reasons you have greenery is because, as we talked about, I don't know if you were here during the whole entire hearing before, but greenery has a purpose, right? I know, but... It absorbs the carbon dioxide and releases oxygen. I know, oxygen but we're putting... And it's uh, good for us. I know yes. Trump doesn't agree, but I think it is. And <laughs> this portion right here, we've added more... You only uh, okay. more CO2 absorbing greenery up front at the front of the building. Think That's about all only two feet. I, I don't know it's know not that much. I'm being a little is. cavalier, but I'm trying to express to you that yeah, yeah. we're no, really, you know. By the way, that's can we only come two to the middle? Feet. I'm not sure what's going to grow there. That might fit vines because two feet's about all you Andrew get there. came. He was up all night coming up with just the right plant life that'll live there. He'll talk to you about it in a second. Mm -hmm. Why do you need nine feet in the walk-in cooler space? In the what? The walk-in cooler. Why does oh. it have to be nine feet wide? I'm not a walk-in cooler expert, although I've been to them before. And the attendant area, does that have to be nine feet wide? Are there some code yeah, issues here or something? Um, I'm not sure if there's a code issue, a design issue, walk-in cooler. It's, a, it's not just um, to walk in. They also store other products and they need enough space to store the products within the cooler as well as in the display cabinets in front. The attendant area, um, it may be nine foot wide, but there's also, you know, there's the counters and there's also uh, equipment and panels and things like, of that nature that handle the tanks, fire suppression system. Um, you need uh, enough access room to... to well, could the walk-in cooler be eight feet wide? Well... <laughs> Wow. After we're done providing the 30-inch setback in the back, I got the feeling that everything is going to start to shrink around there. So we are going to shrink. Yeah. The building's going to come down in size, obviously. It's going to bring it down a couple hundred square feet. So things will get smaller. You'll see a revised plan with a smaller, smaller building. Okay. So my feeling about it is it's you really do have to have some kind of planting solution along the perimeter. I'm not a landscape architect. I'm like learning on the job how to be a landscape architect because we don't mostly have any to come to the board. <laughs> so, you know, come up with a. An why don't we? We're going to put together. Solution. Why don't we put together a, a, like almost a charrette for you? We'll give you a couple of ideas that hopefully meet your goals. And we will know they'll meet our clients' goals, and maybe perhaps you could see something that's pleasing out of that, where we could come to an agreement on that. Okay. okay. Meanwhile, we still have the significant traffic issues. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, yes. And uh, our traffic experts are here, Chuck and Frank. I'll let them come up and speak to the board about that. Mr. Cheney, for the record. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Commissioners. My name is Charles Olivo, O-L-I, V as in Victor O, with Stonefield Engineering. Hi. Oh. We did have a, <laughs> yes, we had an opportunity two weeks ago, approximately, to meet with the Department of Transportation. The BSA was represented at that meeting or conference call, which occurred. We did discuss everything under the sun having to do with traffic and access and also improvements along the roadway system that could potentially address a number of the concerns that have come up both at the DOT level and then also based on the BSA comments. As Project Council mentioned, where we started here was with four access points and five fuel pumps. We are at three access points 
and we now have four fuel islands for eight fueling positions. We believe that those are absolutely necessary to accommodate the traffic in and out of the site with proper capacity and serviceability. Obviously we want vehicles to be able to enter the site, motorists to enter the site, be able to fuel effectively and then leave the site in a safe and effective manner as well. We discussed all of this with the Department of Transportation, again with Tracy represented during the call, and we came out of that meeting agreeing that the access plan as shown, the number of fueling positions shown, the circulation aisles shown are all adequate to accommodate safe, tra safe traffic to and from the site. That's, that's the presentation. Okay. So there we had a bunch of questions. Did you hear our questions? No. Yes. From previously this week? No. Or yeah, during yesterday. Right? Yesterday, you, yes. You did. So can you respond to our questions or should we yes. answer them again? No, we could certainly go through the questions. I know there were comments about the ability to circulate vehicles into the site and use the various pumps, correct? correct? Would there be enough room for motorists to make the right turn in, whether they're coming from Sedgwick or, Sedgwick, or they're coming from West Fordham Road? And circulation plans have been provided within the set, which you have, which show a number of different options for motorists to come and fuel on either side of the fueling Can you positions. Take us through them because sure. we don't know which ones do what. The first sheet in the set is the, the existing conditions plan. And as you come to the fourth sheet in the set, just flipping through, you'll see the, the number? What is the sheet Z number? number? The sheet number is Z 004. So one of the questions was, is there room for someone who is coming west on Fordham Road, turns into the middle curb cut, fuels up, and then wants to go to the convenience store and park there, can they turn right, is there a way for them to even do that, and um, bypass a car that's leaving? Yes, they can turn right from any of the fueling positions. They can physically make that turn based on the geometry and based on 24 feet clear behind the fueling canopy and the fuel pumps. We don't see the geometry shown on this drawing. Nobody's turning, nobody's turning right. Well, let's take, we'll start at the easterly fuel pump, the vehicle that's all the way to the east of that pump. Yeah. And you'll notice that you see the geometry of that vehicle making a right turn and then pulling into a stall. Okay. You can replicate that across any of the fueling positions yeah, shown. Actually, he has more room than everybody else. He does, but that same geometry can be applied to any of the vehicle turns. You can imagine okay. if we showed that everywhere here, it would be very hard to follow the actual lines themselves. But what we're showing is an indicative movement. No, that actually, if I were to just take the width of the car mm -hmm. and use exactly that same geometry, I'm hitting the tree... Um, bump the, the curb of the tree pit. They're intersecting with that top horizontal line. Yes. That vehicle making the right turn, Right. that is the farthest extent of the turn. Right. So, so it would be able what? to intersect with that horizontal no, line. No, that's the center of the car. What do you mean? Right. The car, so the car is centered on that line. Yes. And it's hitting the curb of the tree pit on the side two to three foot overhang on most vehicles, passes over that area, which is a low curb, and then continues into the stall. But the plants the will plants be... are in the way. You're going to be the, the plants the are behind the curb, six inch reveal. No, the plants have spread. You're going to be hitting plants. Sorry. It's not going to have an issue turning out of those and, and continuing on. That's not what this shows. So that's the first. And then the second is, is there really room for passing there? Not sure if there's room for passing. So that, that's the first thing. So that's not demonstrated here. And you have to assume that the plants are, the, these are large plants. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. They're not little flowers. Understood. They're shrubs that sure. are going to have girth. Right. Right? So it can't crash into the shrubs. It's not going to crash into the shrubs. Well, you're saying it, but you have to demonstrate it. Okay. We can demonstrate that. Okay. And when you're showing that line, the, you have to show a car there so you can see what the width of a car is. An average size car, not a, you know, super 
<laughs> no, we're not going to look at a smart car. We're not going to look right. at a suburban with extended cab. We're going to look at a design vehicle somewhere around 17 feet long. It would be able to complete that turning movement. Typically, shrubs and other types of plantings located within a plant bed like that are cut back. They're maintained to allow for that circulation aisle behind that particular area. Usually when we run auto turn templates, whether it be for a passenger car or a truck, you will see areas where the front of the vehicle passes over curb. And that may happen here, but that is not going to impact the livable part of, of this plant. It's not going to hit the trunk of the arborvitae or whatever is planted back there. It will not impact or change that whole landscaping strip in the back there. What did you say? It's we'll going indicate to hit the that. The trunk of the tree? It's not going to. No. How high is the curb going to be? Six inch. Okay. Um. I have questions yeah, about the uh, the cars accessing the pumps and traveling on the sidewalk. Yes. So. Um, if you look at zero, zero 004, yes. and you look at the far left position, the south position, yes. that car's traveling on the sidewalk yes, for it quite is. a distance, but you, you can't even really tell what the distance is because nothing's dimensioned right. to know, is that 10 feet, is that 30 feet, is that... It's know. probably somewhere around five to eight feet in terms of where it's actually turning onto that sidewalk area. It's moving at very low speeds. It's then traversing into the area where the driveway is itself. Why is and then it travels out of the site. Sorry, why is that okay to drive on the sidewalk? Well, when we look at these types of circulation plans for gas stations with C stores, if you look at approvals that the BSA has made for other projects, if you look at gasoline fueling service, the fire department requires that gas pumps are set about 10 feet off of where the right of way line is. Mm -hmm. So it's very common throughout all the boroughs that you'll see canopies that are located somewhere around 10 to 15 feet off that right-of-way line. Mm -hmm. Now because you have relatively wide sidewalks here, you have about a 20-foot wide sidewalk, but you're in an open structure, the canopy's open structure, you have excellent visibility, you're able to see at that interface very well when you're a passenger in a car versus someone that's walking through that area. The reason that it's acceptable is it's very visible, the speeds are very slow, and that it's infrequent that a vehicle is actually traversing long stretches of sidewalk. Momentarily, it may come into that area of influence along the sidewalk. But at that time, it queues at the driveway, and then it leaves the site. Did DOT sign off on that? They did. They said that was We looked at somewhere around 15 to 20 vehicle turning really templates. Yeah, DOT hasn't signed off on anything. Yeah, they're still, re yeah, they're still anything. reviewing that. That's how that's their, how what they've represented to us to staff. Right. They didn't uh. sign off on this. They looked at it and there was a discussion and then they received uh, presumably some plans that are responding to the conversation, yeah. but they have not signed off. If I may clarify the statement because I don't want it to be mm -hmm. taken the wrong way. We sat and met with the DOT for an extended period of time two weeks ago. We left that meeting with what I would characterize as a verbal sign off on the plans that you have here pending revised plans showing off-site improvements as well as analysis. We did not leave that meeting with major safety issues, concerns, go back to the drawing board, figure this out. Having many meetings with the DOT in the last 15 years of my career, I would characterize that as a verbal sign-off. Now with that being said, permits are needed, formal sign-off is needed, we are working with the Department of Transportation on that. But they are very familiar with the turning templates required to enter and exit via these three curb cuts. Are they familiar with the number of pedestrians who are affected by this, by that kind of a turning radius? I'm, I'm looking at what would happen if everyone is coming in and going according to these plans and there's sort of no place, we talked about this at the last hearing, there's no area of refuge for a pedestrian. You walk down and it's an obstacle course and you can't anticipate as a pedestrian that a car is going to be driving on the sidewalk like that. All of a sudden you're walking and there's this car and you're far away from the curb cut. I, I actually don't understand that. There's no way to warn a pedestrian. That this is very different drive. than coming out of a parking garage, coming out of an area where there's a building or wall that's proximate to the sidewalk where there's that need to warn. 
When you're coming out of a parking garage ramp and there's a building wall at the face of the sidewalk interface, typically throughout the city you will actually see warning signage. This is completely open. And this is the same characteristic that you'll see of other gasoline station canopies throughout the boroughs which have been approved and which function safely. If this canopy was pushed up against the sidewalk and had a vertical wall face that you could not see through, then I might share a concern about alerting pedestrians. But you were talking about vehicles moving at a one to two miles per hour as they travel in or out of the site Hopefully. being extremely visible. Not to mention the fact that we have completely removed the ability, which I haven't seen as part of really many approvals of gasoline fueling services, you've removed the ability for left turn in and left turn out vehicles. You cannot come from the opposite side of West Fordham Road into this site as a result of the improvements that would be put in as part of this project. Well, that's a different subject. So we're It's saying different, but it's related to the fact that you might find vehicles darting into driveways where that doesn't exist anymore as a result of the improvement plan that would be in place. It's an improvement that I have not seen in the Gore areas that are across from, from many gasoline fueling services. So I think with regards to safety, this applicant has shown is that they are very attuned to safety here. And if there's a matter of putting pavement markings consistent with Vision Zero types of implementation, putting pavement markings along the sidewalk itself to alert motorists and pedestrians, we're, we're happy to do that. But this is completely open. There is no shock and, and awe. There's no surprise about the interface of pedestrians and vehicles here. I wanted to ask you a question about your truck circulation. You have diesel at your... The westernmost yeah. pump, right. correct. Now, you show a truck pulled up to the diesel fueling station. Yes. But isn't the gas tank behind the tractor, not in the middle of the trailer? Yeah. Yes, so I'll explain so what this exhibit the, shows. Sure. The truck would be sticking out onto the sidewalk. Onto the sidewalk when it Right. Fills. So well, here's what we have here. We have something called a low flow diesel pump. It pumps at about seven gallons a minute. Typically when you have larger trucks of this nature, so we're, we're grappling with a couple things here. One of the major concerns has to do with geometry. Can you physically get a truck to be able to navigate this turn? What this exhibit is showing is that a larger truck could traverse this movement. We don't expect trucks of this size to fuel here. But why? why? They want to? Well, they, well, there's a reason why they don't, and that's because this is not a truck stop. At truck fueling services, what you typically have is you have a master and a slave on either side of the gas truck, so you fuel from both sides. 40 gallons a minute on one side, 20 gallons a minute on another side. You're looking at 60 gallons a minute to fuel that truck and then it continues on its route. What we have here is low flow diesel. In most cases, in almost all cases, those vehicles that are on the road for long hauls, they travel to other truck stop destinations. This is a 30 foot box truck that we would expect that might come here, larger pickup trucks, trucks of that nature. The reason that we showed a larger vehicle is to show you geometrically that it could turn out. This size truck will not fuel under the fueling positions here. So it, maybe you should show us a box truck because I think Completely that agree. Because, you know, I could see how that might have problems fitting there too. We'll show the box and we'll show its ability to come out and not encroach onto the sidewalk area. It's a fair point. I have a question. Um, going back to um, drawing 004. Yes. Uh, what is the difference between these um, traffic control sign one and two the um, that's uh, located on either side of the uh, the southernmost curb cut one is proposed no left turn sign facing the site and the other one is no left turn sign facing the roadway at 30 degree what we're looking to do with those turning restriction signs is prohibit the left turn in so as you're driving on West Fordham Road traveling in an easterly direction, you need a sign indication that tells you you can't make the left turn into any of the driveways. In addition to that... No, 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 but hold on. Sure. Two is facing which way? The facing street. the roadway. It's Two is facing the roadway and one is facing the facility? Yeah. Yes. Would so it be better to oh, say okay. no entry? Yeah. Well, you can make the... We don't 
want people to think they can't make the right turn into the site if you see it from a certain angle. But if oh, there's certain language that you would prefer, I mean, we're happy yeah. to, to show something different. Again, we discussed it with DOT. They felt Cause, comfortable cause with the signage. It's too much to read if I'm coming there. And, and if your roadway barrier is going to extend, maybe you should extend that roadway barrier a little further. That would prevent somebody from wanting that, you know, those uh, plastic. In, in the middle of West Fordham yeah. Road? We can to a certain extent, but we go from what I'll call a wider gore area with the horizon, with the diagonal striping to just a simple double yellow line. And so to put the quick curb or the bollard system in the double yellow line is not something that would work. The DOT essentially said to us, max out the bollards within the gore area. The signage is simply a redundancy added on to that to make sure that drivers don't attempt to conduct that movement. So they have this signage that visually tells them not to do it, and then you have a physical impediment in the bollard system. Now, you install the bollards? That is my understanding, yes, under the direction of the them? DOT. That would be something that the applicant would have to discuss with the DOT. The DOT would like us to use the same bollards that they use at other locations throughout the city so that there can be somewhat of an agreement how quickly those can be replaced. I thought that the DOT said only the middle curb cut could be used from Fordham to access the site and that the southernmost or westernmost curb cut is only egress. We did discuss what movements would be permissible at all of the driveways at the meeting that we had with DOT. I believe everyone is in agreement that the westerly driveway would be used primarily for out. But it is 30 feet wide, and if a vehicle were to pass the middle driveway, they would have the ability to make the right turn into the site. The fuel truck also has the ability to make the right turn into the site, which is located next to the fuel tank area, which is more than likely where they would come in. So in terms of access management, the department, they were considerate of the fact that we'd like to provide flexibility in the manner coming in and out. Very similarly, if you look at the easterly curb cut, it is more than likely that the majority of traffic there will be via the right turn in only from Sedgwick as it turns onto West Fordham Road. But that does not preclude the ability to make the turn out of the site at that area as well. So the goal is not to force and constrain vehicles to one or the other. The goal is to provide flexibility so that during peak times, you can enter or exit via any of the three curb cuts. Seriously? They, uh Exiting from the one that's in the Sedgwick? Yes. Mm -hmm. How? And going in the same con direction. Yeah, especially sure. if you're going to the convenience, convenience store. Right, if you're leaving the convenience store, that, that would be that. optimal. Yeah. You'd come out of that driveway. Yeah. You come out, yeah. and then you turn here. Yeah. Before you get into the heavy truck. And that's actually, in some ways, you have a stop sign, so it gives you the ability okay. to make. So you had a no right turn sign number three on the other drawing, um, it, which I don't see now. That was on your, you had two signs on the island um, opposite Sedgwick. Yes. That are no longer shown on the drawing. What happened to those? Those should still be shown on this drawing. This drawing, again, the primary reason was to show the ability for vehicles to come in and out via different types of movements, but those signs would still be implemented and installed. Okay, so yes. then there was, a, there was a sign number three there sure. that said no right turn and I didn't understand what its purpose was. It the, was on that island. The DOT would like us to prohibit the ability for a vehicle on West Fordham Road proper from east of this location to make the right turn into the first easterly driveway. That is why we have the bollard system in that gore area and the signage would be secondary to that. That would going, be going against traffic. No, no going in no. a westerly direction. Merge. <coughs> no, I know, but how could you make a this. right turn? You have to make a right turn to get to the gas station. You do, but you wouldn't be able to do it at the first driveway. The first. But how could you make it at the first because you've got the bollards in the way? That's exactly right. So it's redundant. It is redundant. It's confusing. So typically what the DOT looks for is a primary means of prohibiting access and a secondary redundant means of prohibiting access. But it's confusing because it makes, I read that as no right turn at all, then I can't get into the gas station. But the other driveways would have open, right in, right out. Be very clear, by the time you pass that first driveway and you see the bollards, 
Are you suggesting, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm just listening to you, that it's confusing to the driver that's coming from Sedgwick? Well, I, the sign is no, actually Fordham, Fordham, Fordham. is on the Fordham side. Right. It's across the, the, the island closest to Fordham. And I'm driving down. It says no right turn. It's telling me that actually I can't go to, it's telling me that I can't go to the gas station. And I see everybody in the gas station. They must be coming in that merge zone from Sedgwick. That's, so that's it, it shows you were driving down, you would think you couldn't make a right turn at all no. into the gas station. Right. Can, can I ask you, is this something DOT required? That yes. both the Ballard and that sign be there knowing fully well that this... But we are happy to go back to them if it's something that the board believes is confusing. We have Ballards there. In my mind, that is a very clear prohibition I of access. I think it would be helpful if we could get a clarification from sure. uh, DOT as to will if both are necessary and if, if DOT believes that that is something it would be helpful for us to know. Like, Understood. Can one be done without? I mean we because we don't want this to end up resulting in having to use the third curb cut which is it's the least desirable one for your end from sure. your end and also from the traffic circulation point of view. We can go back to the DOT and discuss that. The bollards are really the thrust of the restriction of the access. I think the signage is secondary, and we can work that out. Right. <coughs> Maybe you put the sign. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'll leave it to DOD. Sure. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, Okay, I don't know who did the traffic study. You guys did the traffic study. We did. There's a the traffic study still shows ten. Should show eight. That's our mistake. Yeah. <coughs> um, and then. Unless we can have ten again. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we asked also whether fueling time accounted for. Um, the running, we're, we're, what we suspect what will really happen is people will just park in front of the pumps and then run to the convenience store to pay in cash or to buy a soda or use the toilet or whatever. And so then they're having an effect on fueling time, which was estimated, I think, at almost five minutes per. So did that analysis take into account that kind of behavior? It did. We studied it during peak times. Typically during peak times, and I've studied somewhere over 50 gas stations actual clocking in and clocking out under the pumps. But you will have people during off-peak times that tend to dilly-dally a little bit when it comes to parking their car and then walking into the convenience store. During peak times with people, employees, they're moving traffic through sites. Generally, five minutes is an average. We sometimes see people spending a little bit more time. We also see people that are quick. They're in and out two to three minutes. So we have accounted for everything. We haven't simply just watched people that are going to the pumps. So for me, the well, it's obviously the landscaping is an issue. Um, and the location of the building relative to the lot line and whether or not there's room with just two little measly feet for anything to grow in that front <coughs> space. Um, but I also really still want to hear from DOT again um, with a different kind of a question, which we talked about at the last hearing, which was not can they accommodate your gas station if forced upon them, but is this a good idea for this location given all the issues that we've encountered here. That, that's a really critical question for DOT. Madam Chair. And I'm, and I'm concerned, very concerned, because I know the specific pedestrian area um, about pedestrians encountering everybody driving on the sidewalk and all of that right. stuff when they go to, because the other part of it is your study, your your peak hour study of utilization yes. um, doesn't coincide with peak, peak hour playground use, mm -hmm. which could easily be similar utilization rates, maybe a little bit less, but similar utilization rates um, running up against much more pedestrian activity. So you actually need to look at the pedestrian use of that sidewalk during peak hours for the playing fields, which is a, this is a good time of year to be doing that, um, and see what the, what the equivalent utilization is for the gas station. So a couple different things, and if I may respond, 
With regard to the land use, and having worked on many applications with DOT, DOT is rather indifferent to the type of land use. They're looking at the amount of traffic coming in and out. Now, of course, the amount of traffic coming in and out is related to the land use. They ask us for trip generation, and then they very objectively assess whether or not the driveways would have impact on the roadway system. So whether it's a certain type of use or it's this use, we've gotten over that hurdle of trip generation in terms of the concerns of the DOT with regard to the amount of traffic coming in and out. Their concerns related to some similar things that the board had concerns with. Where are the driveways going to be located? Four driveways seems excessive. Can you make it three driveways? We've made it three driveways. Do you have enough pumps on site to be able to service the amount of traffic projected for something like this? Provided that analysis, they're in agreement with that analysis. So speaking to the land use specifically, I believe, and again, we have to get formal sign off from DOT, but I believe we've gotten over that hurdle as it applies to how DOT assesses a site. Now in terms of the landscaping, I know I'll just offer it up as a suggestion. I know the Department of Transportation where they're pinched for land, they use planters and things of that nature rather than thicker, wider plant beds. So again, I know we have our work to do with our landscape architect, but I just offer it up as a suggestion no planters, here. Plants die and planters. We don't do planters. Understood. Um, okay, but so I'm not sure what you were exactly getting at, but I'm so we look at different things than DOT looks at, right? We're yes. looking at the impact on the neighborhood. That's our concern. Right? Yes. So, so I'm going to go back to impact on pedestrians when they're using the ball fields at their peak times, when what the utilization rate of the gas station would be at that exact same time, and how you're going to. And what the, what's the data? I don't know because the peak time for the gas station use was rush hour, which isn't necessarily when the playing field is. We, we will study that and we'll provide, Eric Klein will provide it to you, but just, just so we go back to, to square one. The site's a commercially zoned site. Yes, we know. So the as of right use of the site could be any number of highly traffic intensive mm -hmm. uses. Mm -hmm. Anywhere from this bake shop that my kids want to go to where you eat the dough where people are lined up. We went there over the weekend, they're lined up out the door. Mm -hmm. See, I could open up a dough shop here, and I'm saying it like that, because I could open up the hottest dough shop in Greenwich Village right now by NYU. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you eat raw cookie dough. There's like a line that's it's crazy. It's a two hour line. Right? It's like a two hour line, right? <laughs> It's the most insane thing I've ever seen. It's, it's but you could pay somebody to wait online for you, which I found out too, but that's another story. But the point simply is, is you know, you can open up this dough shop here, and all of a sudden you have 10 million people uh, going to the Bronx to eat the dough and, and lining up, and that's all as of right. And nobody is going to say when they open up the dough shop what's going on on the playground behind you to, so before they open up the dough shop. That's all I'm suggesting. But that's an as of right use, right? I know. And this requires a waiver from the board. So once you're here, environmental review, traffic I know, studies. I know, but never, ever, 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 ever heard that something that could restrict the development of a property would be somebody using a park nearby. That's all I'm suggesting. No, it has That's, to do with pedestrian rates. So we'll get you the pedestrian the study rates. study looked at pedestrian rates and said there were only one pedestrian every five minutes or something like that at the hours, at the peak hours when basically people are commuting, right? So I know this location, and that's not the only time that pedestrians are We'll give you the stats. There. We'll okay. give you the stats. I just wanted to call out that, you know, the, whatever the stats show, there's a lot of eyes of right uses. Well, just keep in mind that encounter. just down the road, um, as the road takes that right bend towards the end, there is another development that um, that is planned, and I know it has a secret document. So you may want to look at that to also help you analyze what the no-build condition of pedestrian volume will be based on that project, because that has gotten the funding, and I think the ground did. Is that down at the Major Deegan, right at the Major uh, intersection of Deegan? I'll yeah, find it. I'll it we'll talk to your examiner. The landing road. It's the landing yeah, road. This is landing road. It's oh. the landing road. So it's right when I, you make that extreme I right turn from the property and, and at the end, landing road. Yeah, when they sold we the did property. That. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, so Chuck and Frank will take so, a look I mean, at it. You can see the building. They'll try and give you the stats. They'll right. give you. We'll give you whatever stats we can. The foundation I mean, we're, is in. We're, we're hearing the board's concerns. I, I'm hearing specifically the chair's concerns, and we are trying to do whatever we can to give you the assurances that, I think that we can. Do an EIS for that. I think uh, it was an EIS. EIS. Okay. Because I remember there was a point where 
we were skirting EIS on that. So, okay. Maybe it didn't happen. We'll see what we can find. Okay. How much time do you need? Okay. How much time do you need to um, are there any speakers on this? Okay. So. <coughs> Submission times. How much time May. do you need, Chuck? Uh, we could submit within two weeks. What's the first available? Is May tw June twenty seventh still available, or is that too cold? June twenty seventh. We can do this. Uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. No, what? Oh, oh, I don't know if they have. Tracy, yeah. it's Tracy had some. Yeah, we want it. We, we want to go. We get it. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. we also want to speak. Eric, there was an email oh, last so week from DOT, okay. and they had to redo the whole analysis. I don't know what you point. Sorry, could you speak up? We can't. Are you guys familiar with it? Reference. She's mentioning oh. DOT. There was an e Tracy is mentioning it from the Department so of Transportation. Good. There was an email last week about an analysis yes. that needed to be amended. Yes. And how far away are you from doing that? We submitted it last night. Last night you submitted it? Okay. To DOT. It was, so, Tracy, the, the report, the amendment was... Okay. We'll, we'll forward it. Yeah. Yeah. Always CC the board. You have to keep everybody copied. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't know what's going on. Okay. So yeah. To that point, DOT would need to review that. They need at least 30 days, right? And then there may be more comments. And in addition to which, we want to reach out to DOT, have a conversation. Um, so uh, what does that put us at? But so that's still eight weeks. If we no, no, it's not enough time for submission. So. How about if we had a submission on June 28th? Is that enough time? That's eight weeks. Or almost. But when was the submission? Yes. Last June 28th. And they submitted to respond to those comments last yesterday. Okay. That sound right? Yeah. Then we, that means for a hearing on July 18th. Oh, okay. oh yes. That's fine. If I could okay. ask if we could have the hearing on July 25th? Sure. Oh, so I'm out of town on the 18th. Okay. July 25th. Then you could have another week. You could submit July 5th because since you're out of town. Yeah, no, we'll submit July. June 28th. Nobody wants to kill the Joe June, Joe, <laughs> July 4th. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So 28th. submitting. We'll, su we'll keep the 28th. June July, 20th. June 28th submission, but a July 25th hearing. I don't want to give anybody any okay. opportunity to destroy yeah. my force. Yeah, okay. okay. What's the. Uh, that's fine. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks for all the time. Coming. Item number 15, 2016, 4121 BZ, 555 Fifth Avenue, Brooklyn. Okay, and we did get fire department on this. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah okay. you should have gotten it. Um, and time you to take revise. You take I think that's <coughs> it. Are there any speakers on this one? I don't think we had any other issues. No box within a box needed. Um, okay, so then I'd like to make a motion to close. Chair Kilmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Shotley Brown. Aye. And a motion to grant. Chair Frommutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Shotley Brown. Aye. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Item number 16, 2016, 4163 BZ, 8120 Colonial Road, Brooklyn. Jordan Most from Shell on behalf of the applicant. Um, I think we have actually everything we needed, so then I'd like to make a motion to close. Chair oh, Kilmutter? Before I do that, are there any speakers on this? Okay, motion to close. Chair Kilmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Shotley Brown? Aye. Motion to grant. Chair Kilmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Shotley Brown? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. New cases. <laughs> Item number one, 214-14A, 215-14BC, 5011 and 5113rd <coughs> Street and 10310-10316 Alstein Avenue, the Queens. Please. Richard Lobel of Sean Lobel PC for the applicant. Good afternoon. <sighs> Chair. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes. Our office has had a history with representation of this applicant going back a number of years, uh, as is um, 
presented in the materials, including the materials relating to DOB enforcement action. There was uh, originally an architect who was on this application. Um, there were applications submitted to the Department of Buildings. Uh, those applications indicated um, construction of new buildings. However, the architect did not note that there was a bed of a map street uh, application that would have been required at BSA. So there was subsequent enforcement action at DOB, and now we're at the um, position where Mr. Fernandez, who is the owner of the property, has been attempting for some time to legalize the structures at the at the lot. Uh, so to be clear, the application has basically been modified from its inception. And so now all that we're addressing is the first a GCL application, which um, granted that we've got the necessary waivers from, uh, waivers from the Department of Transportation or necessary sign-off does not present any particular problems uh, in, in, in a grant. And so now we're really left with what amounts to a yard waiver uh, for one front yard uh, on a lot, which I think that may be the most triangularly shaped lot that we've had <laughs> before the board. Uh, and so, um, so I... Uh, understand the board's comments here uh, and we're happy to address those. We note that the um, bulk that's being requested is within what is permissible. Uh, I think probably what's going to best benefit the applicant here is to narrow down the board's areas of concern and then to uh, respond in writing. I know that there were certain questions posed with regards to the financial analysis and as noted by Commissioner Brown, D uh, Dan Lane who had performed the financials on this is semi-retired so um, we're trying to um, keep a controlled scope of what we're putting before him. But um, we, we do have some of the issues that were presented by the board at the executive session. We're happy to ask the board some more specific questions and then resubmit on that. We're hopeful that uh, the board at some point um, comes to the conclusion that the waiver that's requested here in terms of the overall scope of this um, of this development is relatively minor. Um, it's, it amounts to a, a front yard waiver again in a in a um, development which is in a triangular shape and despite the fact that we are before the board um, this waiver is important for the eventual completion and legalization of the project. So um, there's a there was a request for an engineering report we've spoken with the owner and we're going to provide that to the board. Um, there is a a discussion of um, the uh, calculations showing use of predominantly built up regs. Um, I know that there was an issue with regards to why the as of right did not use the predominantly built up regulations. My understanding, and we're going to address this on resubmission, is that the architect is unable to use predominantly built up regs if he is asking for a, a an 18, uh, a waiver of, of front yard requirements along the 103rd Street portion of the property. So were the property to be set back a full 18 feet, we'd be able to take advantage of the full 1.65 FAR, but with the proposed layout, um, we're not with a with only a 10 foot. We would be required to uh, have a, a 10 foot yard uh, in order to, uh, or we would be we would not be permitted a 10 foot yard in, if we wanted to take advantage of those. So I, I think what if I understand what you're saying is that if we were to use predominantly built up, then you're required to have an 18 foot setback. Correct. Correct. If you're not using predominantly, then it's 10 foot. Correct. But the conforming plan that you have submitted, I think. It doesn't. It has both a 10 and an 18. 18. Because I'm assuming ramps are permitted obstructions. Um, I'm actually the 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 10 foot that we're referring to is along the 103rd Street side. So yes, that, right. So um, there's both a 10 foot and an 18 foot, and so the existing buildings all have a 10 foot, right? Correct. But the and but the staircase has been removed because this is an as of right, right? But the new construction of building number three, I guess, has an 18 foot setback with the big ramp in the front. So according to that, um, they should be able to pull forward the as of right buildings 10 feet because you're not pursuing the pre built up. No, no, right. That's 18. Yeah, that's 18. And so what's right. the conforming showing? 18. Yeah, and then that ramp yeah. is within, so the ramp can be right. outside. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the confusion, is why provide 18 at all? And then that was the same question 
related to the as of right versus the proposed, what is the as of right that is shown in section um, as being, I think, one foot nine off grade, have a big ramp in the front and the proposed doesn't have a big ramp in the front? Right, I think that there may have been a, a reconsideration which was received on the ramp, but I, I really, what I would really like to do is have the architect just address with finality okay. the the um, the issue with regards to pr using predominantly built up and providing a you know a ten foot setback. Right. But but what it's doing is it's raising questions right. about whether the as of right is a f is fully taking advantage Understood. of its opportunity. And and I think that it is, but but we can clarify that on the resubmission. Mm -hmm. Don't think it. Um, the yeah. other part of it is why does the as of right have so many ramps? and the proposed doesn't, even though they seem to be effectively the same, right? That's fine. We can, we'll, we'll provide information on that as well. Um, I don't know whether or not there were, uh, we, we got, we have uh, Commissioner Brown's comments on the financials. I don't know if there's anything else that was um, at issue other than what was raised at the executive session. Um, About the B finding? Correct. Did you have more? You I had a, a lot of about questions it. about the A. You want to go back to the A or sure. the A with the B? Okay. That's fine. So what I have is that there was a um, there was a discussion of the existing triangular lot and how it compares to other triangular lots in the area. Right. I think and what's on them and the fact that which you don't discuss in this A finding, the fact that this lot has has had existing buildings on it. Doesn't that put it in a position that's different from perhaps the other lots? You know, oftentimes, you know, we have vacant lots sure. that we're comparing to built lots, and the vacant is considered at a disadvantage because the built lots have structures on them that are non compliant, right. right? So, why isn't this one taking advantage of the existing structures that are maybe non complying? I don't know. I think that when we submit the um, discussion of the engineering report that we would also address the condition of those buildings that were existing on the lot. Um, although this does go back a number of years, my understanding f at the time was that those buildings were in a uh, serious state of disrepair. Okay. And so, um, and, and sadly, <laughs> there is a tremendous amount of documentation supporting the nature of the existing buildings. There's an entire record that was before oath. So we're able to um, provide some, some, some fairly robust materials which address the condition of those existing buildings. Um, I, I would say that um, were, we, were we able to uh, have proceeded um, in an as of right setting with Department of Buildings, Mr. Fernandez, w w that was clearly his desire because, again, um, you know, without uh, finding any fault with any agency, the, the, the Built, the buildings have remained unbuilt for for a number of years, but um, but again, um, I think once we document the conditions of the existing building and the nature of the as of right and the, the real um, shortcomings of that proposal, then we're going to the board I think will be satisfied. Okay, and but in terms of the engineering report, it's probably the same um, inspection to look at how much work is in place because I'm. One of my questions is why can't the lesser variants just remove that exterior staircase, right? So if the if there's no stair installed already, I mean that that should technically go to the variance question. Yeah. But if there's no stair, then why can't the interior have a slightly different layout so that the stairs on the interior? That, that's fine. We'll address that. And I had asked yesterday why this couldn't be a multiple dwelling instead of separate building segments and get rid of the additional staff. I think that was actually one of the, when the new architect assumed the job, I think that was actually one of the discussions that we had, but um, for for certain um, development, developmental reasons, they said that it, was, it would not, uh, it may have had to do with the parking, but I'd, I'll check, but we'll, we'll respond to that uh, in writing. Okay, and then, I mean, some of this is just repeating what we said at the review session, but like on the as of right, there's no development of a building for because the parking is provided in an open lot, and I don't understand that. Why isn't it just parking provided underneath that building and then housing above that? We'll look at that scenario as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Regarding the layout of the parking, I know you're saying it's no longer a waiver, but when I look at those cars exiting those curb cuts, 
I, I don't see how it could possibly work. On one side, you're backing out into a utility pole. On the other, the curb cuts are not lined up to the parking spaces. I, I just don't see how it's going to work. And everything is in tandem. So. Well, we can, we can, um, uh, uh, I know in similar situations we've had the Department of Buildings weigh in on maneuverability, so we can do that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, again, as you mentioned, there's no waiver requested, but uh, I understand that the board would want to ensure uh, pedestrian and traffic safety, so we can we can have that. Well, one would think that a parking space would have to line up with a curb cut, and on Alstine Street, I really don't see how that's possible. Okay. So Especially if there's a second car behind the garage, then those other cars are really having to manipulate out of their spots. And, and literally, there's a utility pole right there. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I see what the, uh, I see that, the, um, is that, you're referring to the curb cut on 103rd Street? No, uh, well, 103rd Street has a traffic sign Correct. in the way. But on Alstein, I think it's even worse that if there's a car in the spot in front of the garage and those cars had to say the, the one in front has to get out and the one behind has to back out, there's a utility pole and they have to sort of make some sort of a curved maneuver and back out for the second car to get out. It, Understood. We can, we can uh, provide the board with whatever assurances are necessary to, to make sure the maneuverability works. I'm not sure if it would work. Right. Well, that's the point. Is right. So Understood. You, you can Hope tell us it will work, demonstrate sure that it, it will work. does or doesn't. Well, I know that I know that historically the board has accepted Department of Buildings uh, with weighing in with regards to whether or not a, a parking maneuverability plan would be sufficient for a site. Mm -hmm. So, and then the other part of it. So, the next time, can you bring the architect? Sure. Because um, I my comment was about. The units on the first floor of the proposed, I with the, I understand how you accomplish not needing a parking waiver in response really to probably neighborhood concerns, right? Um, but what it did was render at least the building four living area. I don't see how it functions. That's like it's hard. There's hardly any living space in it. I like to see somebody furnish it. You'd have to have a corner bed. Yeah, you could have a triangular, and it wouldn't be an equilateral triangle bed. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. It's a tough site. Um, it's uh, yeah. I know that the that there was a discussion with regards to the size of that unit um, and how it was represented on the financials. That the understanding was that those would be um, studios, obviously, um, of approximately 400 to 500 square feet. Um, but we can uh, review that and then make sure that they're correctly accounted for in the financials. Yeah, but it's not just that. I mean, this is the actual proposed plan as opposed to the ads of right where you maybe you don't Understood. study it so carefully. But, I mean, this really has, it's almost not a viable apartment. We prefer charming. Uh, it's almost not a charming apartment. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, the whole idea that they would go ahead and build something like that, like that where there's really no place quite literally to lay your head um, seems like a mistake in terms of development. And obviously, this uh, developer has been plagued by a bad history. So sure. So shouldn't he, he or she should not continue the poor um, pursuit? Pursuit. The garage obviously yeah. took up a very nice bedroom. That's where and, it was. Yeah, and that's interesting. There's a this garage would be then only for this unit. Yes. Mm -hmm. you is it sleeping in it because you can't sleep in the living room? I guess the question <laughs> I the question I have is whether or not uh, it, whether or not the applicant should be looking at uh, a layout which. Uh, adds to the spaces of those units and requires a waiver of two spaces of parking. I mean, that's if if it is if it is a concern of the boards with regards to the size of those units, we're happy to to look at that. Right. Um, but now, then, you're going to have to go through the parking studies and so on. There's right. a lot of neighborhood opposition about parking. Right. You're going to have to deal with that. Okay. Or you do it as some kind of a duplex apartment, something like that instead. Okay. 
make them slightly larger units. Is it possible to flip the living room with the dining room? Because at least the living area it does, is does it not leak a lot line windows. Leak. Oh, it's a lot line. Yeah. It's a lot line. Okay. It doesn't have parking well, it's outside. Eight foot. Well, it's no, eight no, feet. No, no, I think it's. That's a got a legal side yard at eight feet, yeah, so that so would be legal. Yeah, but I think so. Aren't you required to have? Oh, 30, 30 feet. feet. Yeah. No, you have to look upon a legal yard or court, but you do need 30 feet, right? Yeah. As a primary. It's a court. As, a, as the court. legal, mm -hmm. legally required mm -hmm. window. And then I have mentioned distance from the window to the lot line for the, yeah. window, for the required window. Oh, yesterday, regarding zoning resolution section 2303 and 2304, whether you have to provide planting street, sure. street trees. We've, we've already spoken to the architect about that. Okay. And, and same thing with section 23451. Uh, okay. Regarding plant, planting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think everything you heard everything during sure. the few sessions. So, all right. So just please bring the architect the next time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. So are there any speakers on this? Perhaps no. Okay. So what do we think? Mid July. Um, for uh, can you give me one moment? Yeah. I think for a, for a continued hearing, mid-July would be great. Okay. So we have July 18th, right? Mm -hmm. Where that would be a submission on uh, June 28th. June 28th. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Yeah. Item number 28815BZ, 1834, East 21st Street, Baltimore. I did that. Good afternoon, Lear Altman from the Office of Lear Altman. Did you have somebody attend your executive session, heard your comments yesterday. To begin, I have a copy of the community board recommendation. They had said they forwarded it to your board previously. I'm not sure, but I had it forwarded over directly from the community board to your office as well as to mine. What'd they say? Hmm? What'd they say? Ooh, <laughs> curious. Uh, 31 in favor. Okay. Two against, one abstained. And you did provide proof of service that I did see. I did, and here is the hard copy as well. If you'd like, I can hand those both up right now. No, I think you submitted them. I did. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we have. We received I did, of that. course. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Would you like a copy of the community board recommendation in hand, just so you can see it? I believe you that they said okay. thirty in favor. That's fine. Um, but you'll submit it if it was. It was submitted. Already. It was already submitted. It was already yeah. submitted okay. by the community board directly, but. Okay. Didn't know if you wanted to see it. No. In addition, there was a comment yesterday. I'll go through a few of the little things first. Was the garage being eliminated or kept? The garage is being kept. Okay. Next also question we is the three-foot space. Yeah. We were missing the second floor plan of the existing building. I saw that. I spoke with the architect. He's going to have that provided for me. Okay. I apologize for that. It must have been some sort of an error in scanning on his yeah, part, yeah. and I didn't catch it. I apologize. Uh, the plans actually currently have a space of two feet eleven and a quarter inch between the house and the garage. It is shown on the first page on the plot plan. So can we just go? You know why it says two foot eleven and a quarter? Not because they're really going to do it at two foot eleven. It was, and a quarter. it was an oversight. It should have said three feet. Yeah, it's just and because we, the we're not denying can't it should help itself on these CAD drawings. This was right? an error. It was three feet. If you look on the initial proposal mm -hmm. to your board, it was in excess of three feet. Okay. What happened when a revision was made with the second notice of comments, mm -hmm. something got moved inadvertently. It should have been three feet. Mm -hmm. If you'd like us to move back to three feet, we're happy to it, do so. It should say real numbers, like people are well, really going to It go. was supposed to be three feet. It was, as I said, it was originally yeah. three feet. Yeah. It, when a change got made for the mm -hmm. response to notice of comments, the second round, inadvertently mm -hmm. it got moved. I, I think somebody just hit a button. Right, right. Okay. Um, or maybe we could make a, depending on how this goes, maybe we could make a note in the resolution so we don't have to drag this on. Um, well, I had the comment about the discrepancy between zoning right. and the plans. Yep. And I mean, they're not, I mean, the, the zoning analysis says one of your side yards is three feet, ten and a half inches. The plans show three feet, nine and five eighths. 
You're right. One side yard is 10 feet, the other one side is 9 You're feet, right. 11 and 3 I, quarter. I'm not going to deny it. The You're right. The same thing with the rear yard. They're all like slightly Correct. Off. Again, what happened was when the second notice of comments, we responded, we updated the statement. So the statement and the plans match perfectly. Unfortunately, we didn't update the zoning analysis, which was the problem. He's going to get me a revised zoning analysis as well to provide to your board that will reflect the up-to-date plans. So, so everything well, matches everything. Right, everything. Now, right now the statement and the plans match. What doesn't match is the zoning analysis. It has to be updated. However, you still have to provide the three feet to the garage so it may of course. change your rear yard. Of course, and if that changes, we will, of course, update the statement as well. Okay. Right, okay. But, you know, just in future, not just this project, but any project that you're working on with architects, this isn't just you, it's everybody. The computer isn't the one who's doing the drawing. It's the architect who does the drawing. So the Understood. drawings shouldn't show 11 foot 5 and 5 eighths because unless that's an existing condition that the surveyor revealed, no one's building to 11 foot 5 and 5 eighths. It just isn't done. And it's just the kind of, unfortunately, the laziness of the drafter. I will the, pass that, that along to my architect. Yes, so that everything should be like solid numbers. Five inches, like that, right? I will pass that along to my architect. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, so we've established that the garage is remaining. We will provide three feet between the house and the garage without a doubt. We'll update the zoning analysis, no problem. Provide the, the existing second floor plan. Good. Okay. All little bits of cleanup. All little things, okay. Um, and I think there was no. Okay, I think that we didn't have any other comments on this. I think that you're supporting information was very good Thank and you. it's a very modest proposal mm -hmm. so with the exception of these teeny little tweaky things I yeah, think there are not going to be any significant changes yeah, on I device. think we could are there any speakers on this I think we could close this and then you'll just submit hopefully quickly we can put it on for the May 16th which is our okay that which should be enough time I, I didn't hear I'm sorry May 16th May 16th, is May 16th? Yeah. for the decision Decision. Be a decision on and that. so, if the architect could just scrub the stuff, make sure nothing says five eighths and three eighths and 33 40 seconds and stuff like that, then <laughs> okay. I'm going to say fixed plans, no odd numbers. Yeah. <laughs> no odd fractions, that's what it is. No fractions. No fractional numbers, better. <laughs> I might get back a set of plans, it's all even numbers. Right. Yeah, yeah, no fractions. Yeah. Okay, so May so May sixteenth uh, we'll we'll close this, but May sixteenth for a decision and uh, submit as soon as you can because it's not a full like ideally by Friday if you can that would be the best. I will do my best. I will speak with the architect immediately today. Okay, great. So for a motion to close, Chair Promoter, aye. Vice Chair Chanda, aye. Commissioner Montanez, aye. Commissioner Cliff Brown, aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number three, 2016 BZ, 1052 East 22. <coughs> Hello again, Lyra Altman from the Office of Lyra Altman. Uh, again, you have notes from your executive session. I do have proof of service, which was also officially submitted to your board in the wee hours of last night. Mm -hmm. Regarding the zoning calculation sheet, you are correct. There was an error. I already have an updated zoning analysis sheet for you. It was just one side yard. It was a typographical error by one foot. Okay. So that's already been corrected, is ready to be provided to your board. There were comments on the scope of the work. You were correct in your summary of the scope, but there was a statement that typically it's shaded and there's a legend. This is shaded with a legend, but I think perhaps it could have been a better setup as opposed to either being white walls and black no, walls. It's not so much the walls. Okay. Because, you know, a lot of times, as you know, it's a major like cutting out of the building and so so it's right. easy for us to say see that that whole section is being added but in this case it's a lot of infill work and uh, so you can't like you know the wall kind of goes like this and then there's a part where it's being filled in just that spot right. it's right? effectively a square in the back left the and square first in the back forward. but on the sides there's little bits right. little corners being filled in and it's you know, we can guess, or let's say we can think that we're understanding it, but what we often ask to do 
is that the um, either the infill area in plan is entirely hatched. Uh, the entire area. Yeah. Have that or done. sometimes we say the existing building is entirely hatched, but in this case, <laughs> either it's way. Less. Yeah. So it's easier to just hatch the infill area in in plan. We could do that for your board if you'd like on this yeah. job. I'm not sure if you want to no, take the time I mean, to I do that. Gonna, you need to submit that other material so it's the same sort of schedule. So if you could just have them hatch in to clarify where the I'll have them hatch all area, new floor area. Yeah, on, on the floor plans. Not just the walls, but the actual floor area. I can have that done. Okay. I can have that done. Okay. Uh, there was also a question regarding the zoning analysis. Commissioner Montanez, I looked over it and I didn't see what you were seeing. According to what I submitted to your board, I see that the number of dwelling units shows one, both as permitted, existing, proposed, and then there's a yes in the last column. Well, you, in the right-hand column, right? It shows yes. It says applies. number of dwelling units, and you have double asterisk. Wall height, you have a double yes. asterisk, and, the, and you go down asterisk. to the... And that says it's a pre, it's a pre-existing non-compliance. So I don't know why you notate it. You, I mean, you notate the floor oh, area, is, the lot coverage is being. You're the, saying there's a double asterisk because it says yes on there. Let me. Well, just, where, where are we doing? Oh, I see. Double asterisk. Then it says pre-existing non-compliance. I just. I'm pulling it up as well. Oh. And the wall height is not non-compliant. Where do we see a double asterisk? Double, oh, all the way on the left. No, yeah. Instead of NA indicates. No, that's something no. that is on the form. That's not something that was added. That's something on that's the That's on the form. That wasn't added it's by my architect. These ones. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? The single, if you look at the single, I'll call it almost like a star on the bottom. It doesn't even look like an asterisk. That's our pre-existing non-compliant. Okay, I'm sorry. That's a form. Yeah, the asterisks are part of the form. That's not us. It is? What does it yeah. mean? Yes. Uh, what? I never know. You're asking me. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, when, it's, when it's we do them, we do them um, in the right column, next in the compliance column. Where, That's where why I didn't see what you're looking at. Where the asterisk is noted, instead of NA, indicate the equivalent district in which it's permitted. Yeah. So that, that's that's a note for the person filling it oh, out. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yes, that's something for, and I was looking at the right <laughs> compliance column where we normally do our asterisks. I don't yes. see an asterisk anywhere. Okay. Well, at least we cleared that up. Right. Those forms. Okay, <laughs> good. All right. So, um, are there any speakers on this? Did I ask that already? Um, no. So, other than really tiny little change on the zoning calculation sheet, which you've done, you, submit, you didn't submit it yet, though. I didn't submit it yet. I wanted to submit it officially. Okay, yeah, you need to. So I thought an overnight email wouldn't And then that little hatching happen. area, so for us to be Thank sure you. that we understand the scope, not glad to mention to. that DOB I is sure to understand the scope. We'll right? be glad to. It's a small and, change. And again, um, I, didn't, I think we talked about this, that the work's modest, it's mostly infill, mm -hmm. um, and it's only the rear yard on the reduction on the first floor. Oh, I think the only other thing was do, whether we have proof that the second oh. floor at 26 foot 8 inches is a pre-61 condition. I'm going to double check. As of 10 minutes ago, the email still hadn't come in from Sanborn. We ordered the Sanborns, and we have been desperately waiting for them to come in. Okay, so we need that. They have not come in okay, so, as of this so very second. Okay, so we need second. that to make sure that, because otherwise you would need a waiver of 26 foot 8. And that would just change our shading in our yeah. documents slightly. Right, right. Okay. All right, then. So... I don't think we can close it because we might add a waiver to this. Oh. 26 yeah. foot 8 might be an added waiver. Or we could close it and potentially reopen. Oh, that's the difference. You can close and vote. Uh, is, it, uh, is the same schedule going to work for you, though? There's, yeah. Two different architects, so we're not putting pressure on one person. Okay. Because we can do this again. It's, it's, there's going to be a very limited set of things. No, we could review. do it the same way if you think the architect could make these changes really quickly and the Sanborn map comes in. <coughs> Yeah. Sanborn map way? usually comes in within 24 to 48 hours okay. so, yeah. and we order so electronically. So we could do this for the 16th, yeah. right? Yeah. That's okay. So again, submit by Friday ideally. And if you can't, let us know when you're going to be. Of course, okay. I will do my yeah. best to get the documents. So that be submit by Friday the 5th and yeah. the 16th. Um, in this case, continue, but we can close vote. Great. Thank you very much. Sure.
Item number 4, 2016-4336-BZ, 643 East Tree, Monte Avenue, the Bronx. <laughs> Mayor Altman helping a friend. <laughs> you said that. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of Roth Grew's office, okay. I am here representing Blink Fitness. They need additional time from what I understand, so I am here to ask. Oh. Okay. Well, from what I understand, there was a talk yesterday, and I'm going to go through what I was told. Mm -hmm. I was asked, is the site open yet? The site is not open yet. Right. The community board also said that they confirmed to your board already that they had the documents and they didn't want to have a hearing. Is that they correct? They didn't actually say we won't have a hearing. We I, just confirmed yeah, that I they got service. Yeah, yeah, I'll reach out to that okay. just to make yeah. sure. I mean, it seems to me if they confirmed service and they didn't mention that they wanted to have they a hearing on don't. it, they were probably waiving it, yeah. but they didn't okay. say it specifically. Yeah, the issue was about acoustical... The sound separation. attenuation. Yeah. What I was told was... Blink is on all the second floor. There's another commercial tenant on the first floor. They're trying to get some additional information. It had not come in yet as of a couple okay. of hours ago. Okay. So he needs some time to get that information to your board. Okay. So because normally, this is for you to relay, but normally of course. they ask for details on the attenuation for the flooring because it's the vibration of the treadmills and all that stuff up against the tenant below, which could drive you out of your mind if it's going on all day, right? So it needs to be vibration and sound attenuated. And we need details. And often we ask for cut sheets of the materials that they're going to be using. So they should just give it to us. That makes it easier. Okay, so... I'll pass that along. What do we think? Uh, I don't know how long it'll take them, but would May 6th or June 6th work? Works. June 6th has room? For, for this. I say, wor works for me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for this. Very easy for me to say yes on this one. This type of thing, you agree, right? That it's, yeah, it takes it's, a second if they submit it. Yeah. Um, so it would give them, well, but it gives them only two weeks to respond. I don't know if that's it's a long time. time. How about we do, is June 20th, Carol? Let me see. I get an email from Todd also. It's, you can fit this on. Because it just... In terms, I'm thinking of the terms of your guys' ability yeah. to review all this. This is looking at a, some a, a, details. A, a, yeah, the details. I was told that they can provide plans with further sound attenuation details in a week or two. Oh, so that was that's what I have here from. So the sixth has more time. room. Than the, the sixth 20th. has a little more room. All right, so let's do it for the sixth. Hope that they can do what they. Yeah, so they and he'll be happier what I, with what I provide him then. Right. So May seventeenth and June sixth hearing. May seventeenth, June sixth. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Item number 5, 2017, 61 BZ, 3618 Main Street, Queens. Richard LaBelle, I'm Sheldon LaBelle, PC, for the applicant. Uh, Chair, I'm joined with Amanda Iannotti from my office, as well as James Chen, the project architect. Uh, first, would like to formally recognize that um, the staff, uh, BSA staff and uh, Executive Director Ryan Singer performed uh, admirably as far as this application is concerned, and as a matter of professional courtesy, we just wanted to tell them we appreciate that and, and appreciate the board's efforts in this regard. Um, Chair, uh, this is obviously an FAA special permit which um, is a fairly straightforward special permit. I know great deference is given to the FAA opinion in this regard, and um, we had a representative at the executive session. We understand that there are some questions with regards to the use of various measurements, uh, so I can do two things. The first is I would assure the chair that um, that the measurements that are used do not uh, affect the fact that the uh, proposed building height is indeed um, well below the uh, the, the uh, permitted uh, maximum height pursuant to the FAA um, documentation and the FAA report. So that the first thing is I think that just to be on the record, we're happy to provide whatever notations and adjustments are required on the plans, but the, the height does um, come below the relative maximums. But more importantly, I think I'd like to introduce uh, James Chen, who in addition to being an architect is also a pilot, and um, he'd be happy to address any of the particularities. I know that uh, Commissioner Montanez had some concerns with regards to those height measurements, and I'm, I'm fairly sure we can uh, address all of the board's concerns at this hearing. Mm -hmm. I'll try to do my best to try to explain not only the architecture side, but 
also it'll be on the aviation side. Okay, state your high. name, please, Rob. My name is James Wu Chen. I'm the architect, principal of the JWC Architect Engineer. Okay. okay, so, Mr. Montanez, you want to start with your... All right, so, um, I guess the main, well, one of the things is that generally now the buildings department has, all, is only accepting um, plans in NAVD 88. We no longer use Queen's data, but I believe your elevations were in Queen's data. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, let me explain. The project is under construction, and uh, when we started the job, when I actually first involved with this job, we started about 2007. And at that time, everything is uh, Queen's data. And, and when we set up the construction, the elevation, all the construction documents was related to the Queen's data. And that during the construction up to this application, we were really hesitate to introduce another data because it's very easy to uh, make a mistake, to confuse the construction activity. So we uh, did not reflect that uh, in AVD. What we also get is uh, during the period, I think before the Sandy began, before the local law was uh, formally accepted in AVD as a data, there was a short period Queen's borrower will accept the NGVD. Yes. And uh, there's a 1.1 feet difference. You are absolutely correct. The mm -hmm. difference is 1.1 foot between the mean sea right. level. But and for our purposes now, forgive well, me if I'm wrong, but I believe we should write our resolution in, in, in AVD 88. Well, what we could do is have, we've done this on another project that we had where they also had that kind of timing where we had the three elevations essentially indicated all in the resolution to be very clear because that project also had the problem of being in this three different data. The Northern Boulevard RKO Keith. Yeah, From exactly. a long period of time they made a chart. Yes. Showing the Queen's datum, the NAV, N NGVD. Well, we don't right. need that one. <laughs> NAVD 88 yeah. and the mean sea level. Mm -hmm. right. Which brings me to my second point is that. So, I but do before you do that, so okay. I think what we should do is make sure it's it clearly in all, it includes NAVD 88 and, um, and Queen's datum, and then for the height for the average mean yeah. sea level. As right? far as the FAA obstruction review process, what do they. Uh, general call for is above mean sea level. Right. Because uh, it, for the pilot, they, there's no way they can measure the height. All they do is use the barometric pressure to set at the mean sea level. That's right. why they, everything was based on the mean sea right. level. Right, but so that's right. So the thing is, the FAA looks at it one way, but our drawings end up going to the Department of Buildings, right? And buildings needs to be able to compare it to the construction documents. Yeah, we, That's we, why they needed to have it in both NAVD 88 and in Queen's Datum if it's, that's how the project was filed originally. And then we have to refer to the FAA approval, which is in mean sea level, which right. we have reviewed cases before and um, NABD 88.0, NABD 88 is equal to 1.1 mean sea level. So I was um, questioning the fact that you're saying they're equal. You No, the, I made the correction. We made the correction. Uh, it is, you are absolutely right. There's a 1.1 feet difference because we were referenced to the NGVD, not the NAVD. Right. That's okay. where the confusion comes from. So we made the modification. So you have to correct that. Correct, yes. And then the other thing you have to correct is the building height is not measured from zero. The building height is measured basically from the base plane. In terms of zoning, the building height is measured from the base plane. Base so, plane or average curve. So your two base planes, I guess you have one on Prince and one on Main Street, don't coincide with what you are using for the FAA, which was 26 feet. Yes. So, I mean, you just have to put everything together. Don't call the building height from zero. I guess rewrite the statement and rewrite the, redraw the plans and just show that everything falls within the FAA limit, but you have to do it so that we're 
confident that all the elevations will be read correctly? I think what the, the confusion also is uh, during the process, I think the board asked to clarify with the building height, what we feel is uh, important just to, to set up the mean sea level as the absolute datum, because that's what the FAA was uh, mm -hmm. reviewing based upon. So on our elevation, we also set the zero zero as a mean level datum. That's the average mean. That's sea the level. average sea level above mean sea level. So we we also give the height from that point to the building. Right. Not that's necessarily the mean. Subcellar. Yeah, yeah. It's measured from that cellar to the top of the roof that distance. Not right. necessarily means the right, building but height. That's the FAA's measurement system Correct. as opposed to the part to zoning's measurement system. And because we give direction to DO Department of Buildings about the zoning, it needs to be in DOB language, not FAA language, which again is above curb or base plane depending on what zoning district you're in. Right. Yeah, we showed the, on the section, we showed the both, uh, both building height with the clarification. Okay, well, um, one is from the base plan to the top of the roof. One is from the mean sea level, zero, zero. So we'll give the both. Can you, uh, yeah, which, of course. Sir, which plan uh, number? I see. It's a revised plan. Oh, it's a new plan. Yeah. Oh, this is a new one. Oh, okay. Okay, so. May I use this? Yeah, yeah, board? sure. We may not be able to see it from there, but yeah. So, well, okay. You're saying that your building height is going to be 189 feet 3 inches. Correct. And the FAA limit above grade is 190 feet. No, that's above the mean sea level. Uh, above the grade is 190 feet, yes. 190 feet? Correct. So then how are you going to fit your obstruction lighting? Well, because uh, on that, uh, when they do the obstru obstruction review, it can all you, has to do with no Can you take the mic plane. with you? The, 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 the microphone, the microphone. microphone. Okay, it's sorry. recording and it doesn't hear Because as a side, is a sloping side. And if I give an elevation of a particular side, it doesn't uh, represent the uh, overall condition. So when we do the, when the FA do the obstruction review, we give them a coordinates of the center point of the site and uh, give them the elevation of the site. When we request the obstruction at 26 feet, it's converted to the upper mean sea level. So the above mean sea level is 26 feet plus 190 okay, so feet. You're saying that the, your base plane in Queens datum would be different, would be equal to what your main, what your base plane with the DOB is? Is that what you're saying? Yes, it will be different. See, it gets very good. Yeah, because the side, this side is, is very tall, is, is a sloping this. So when we give them the coordinates, we pick up the center point of the side. And uh, we are giving them the most accurate uh, survey category on the FAA. And that's, which, what the, that's the FAA's instruction? That's what, the, that's what the FAA requested to, in order to give us a favorable height uh, during the so process. So you take the high point of the no, site? No, we didn't take the high point. We take the middle point. The middle point. Just the middle point, even if it's the lowest point on the site. Correct. And when they, when they do the obstruction review, they already consider there was a tolerance so-called. Mm -hmm. That's what the building to the, the protocol, mm -hmm. when they do the obstruction review, the, it depends on the survey accuracy. We are in A1, which is uh, 10 feet lateral and the three feet vertical tolerance. Mm -hmm. And it's not a uh, one height. Mm -hmm. So how high is the obstruction light above the roof? It's here, at the no, corner. but what is the actual physical dimension? I guess it's a specified light. What is the height of that light? It will be at the, at the 216 above mean sea level height. So what is the, the actual physical light? How tall is it? It's uh, four feet, two five feet? feet? No, no, oh, two, it's feet. two feet. Yeah, two feet. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you give us a chart? Wait a second. I don't understand. It's two feet, but don't you have bulkheads? 
Is no, this the, sitting on the top of the that's bulkhead? That's the highest point. We don't have it. The bulkhead is already at the high point. So shouldn't the light be sitting on top of the bulkheads? It's not indicating the high point of the roof. No, the, it uh, will be on top of the bulkhead. Is yeah, it? It will be, it will yes. be on the top. Oh, that's what I'm just checking that he has enough room. Right. Because he has 212.6 feet to the roof in mean sea level. The then it will be another two feet for the light. Only two feet for the light. Only two feet for the light. That will be 214 and a half feet. And the FAA gave him 216. Okay. So it should fit. But, but I don't we see need to have drawing. it specified exactly. I don't see in the drawing the lights shown on the So he doesn't bulkhead. have it shown here. He had it it's on the architecture drawings uh, we had showed, I think. On well, the what, these are the sections, right? Um, I mean, I have... We have on, the, on the FA 20, 24, the sheet 24, the last couple of pages. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, there it is. That's, the, that's not the bulkhead, though. What is that? But you have to revise all, because this is going to be revised now, because that's not the same as the height you have on this sheet. Is that, Here is it that says data? 11, now you added another foot. We reduced another foot. No, you just told me here on this sheet that it's 212.58 to the bulkhead. On this sheet, it says it's 211.5 to the bulkhead. Can I? Right here. See? Oh, that, that this one is reduced, uh, re revised. The revised one has not sent it so to you. The building went up a foot. Uh, we just uh, changed the, based on the new data. We but they're we, still in AMS, they're both in AMSL. Yes, everything is uh, AMSL. Okay. Well, anyway, could you please just verify everything, then give us what the height of the building is, provide a chart where everything is in Queens datum and ABD 88 and AMSL okay. for all the relevant points. And then that um, lovely little cross section you made that shows the FAA surfaces, which is yeah, tiny, tiny, tiny. You have the building is about this big. No. Oh, uh, the chat cross section, okay. If you could blow that up and show the different surfaces and just verify that the only surface you would have to do <coughs> is the approach surface. Because, you because the FAA has also the horizontal surface. You didn't study all the zoning surfaces. You only studied one of them. We, uh, we, our project Oops. site that goes into the approach surface. Right, but the thing right. is that you should show us the other surfaces to make sure that they don't to, for us to know that they don't impinge on the building further. Because you're concluding that the approach surface is the only one that matters, but we don't see your analysis that gets you there. Yeah, because uh, uh, there's an um, obstruction review plan shows this uh, where the boundary is. Well, that's this unplanned, but you should show, the other one showed us the um, section, so we would like to see the section also. Um, you drew it, it just is very, very tiny. Okay. Do you think that's a problem? Not a problem. Can I ask you a question? Sure. I know that you're, you're, are you an amateur pilot? Yes. No, I'm a commercial uh, pilot. Really? Commercial? What? Commercial license. You have a commercial license. Yeah, okay. I'm soon to be a flight instructor. Okay. So, <laughs> congratulations. So my question though is, how many projects have you done that require FAA approval? Uh, one, two, I think at least five. Okay. Yeah, this project uh, initially we did a previous study. Actually, we have high feet higher, five feet higher, uh -huh. uh, approved from FA, and the job uh, get the delay because of the financial crisis. Uh -huh. And uh, when we try to resume, uh -huh. gain the high, the FA had a more strict uh, the category. And that, at that time, we also have a little bit deadline on the scheduling. So we took the five feet less height mm -hmm. and uh, didn't uh, insist to get the five feet higher because we don't think we need it at that time. Right, okay. Yeah. But the other projects that you did didn't require zoning waivers. Um, 
it, it will require the zoning waiver for the BSA, but uh, because uh, before that, uh, building department is not reinforce this zoning waiver. Did not so, did not enforce it, and you know until like more than until like a few years, years ago. ago. Yeah, correct. Right. So in other words, you worked on projects more than five years ago that required FAA review that are should have needed a zoning waiver, but because DOB didn't ask, you never had to come to the BSA for them. Yeah, at that time, this is the first one. It, it's actually during the process of the construction, and they have to come here to get the waiver. Okay. okay. All right, so, but I mean, so you know, part of it is, it's a very, it's a kind of a strange special permit that we review this and FAA reviews it, but because we, the city, are reviewing it, we need to take special care that you've submitted to the FAA all the information that we need to see to make us feel comfortable that it complies, that you've, you've established the relationship of the building to all of the kinds of analyses that are required in the zoning resolution, okay? So I believe the zoning resolution has four yes. analytical methods. Right. So you need to do all four, not just the selected one or two, okay? So you need to look at all four of them. And if you, I, because you haven't done one before the BSA before, um, you, if you need direction, we have samples that are done by FAA engineers, people who used to work at the FAA and now have businesses doing that. So we can give you a, a sample of one, but I'm uncomfortable not seeing all of the studies done. We, we actually never have those, have a case where all the studies aren't done. The, the 216 feet above mean sea level height was uh, granted the, by the FAA Obstruction Review Division. Understood. They are the assorted figures uh, to determine if that's the building obstruction is a hazardous to the aviation or not. Correct. And we give them all the information they needed and in order for them to come up with that conclusion. So what information did you give them? We give them the coordinates, mm -hmm. we give them the survey accuracy, mm -hmm. and then we give them the height of the building. And um, it went through the public hearing process with a with the FAA, mm -hmm. um, they come back with a negotiation, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a conclusion right. they Did had. Did you give us all the material that you gave to the FAA? Uh, the, the material given to the FAA is relatively simple. They, no. they Did you give us all of the information that you gave to the FAA that enabled them to make their determination? Um, I don't think so. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. That's why I'm asking the question. But yeah. the thing is, the FAA surfaces are, are not different. the same yes. surfaces that are in the zoning resolution. Right. Yeah. To make more matters more so, complex. So the point is, I appreciate that the FAA is ultimately the group of engineers who are looking at its impact on this particular runway, right? But we don't have what we need to have for the zoning analysis that's required by the zoning resolution. And we need that. And if you have a difficulty preparing it, we have examples of others that are prepared by flight engineer specialists. And you can either contact one of them or, or use that as a model. Okay, you understand Richard, right? Okay, so you guys need to work together. Jonathan can give you a sample application. They have it, they have it already. You got a sample application where it was okay. a really very thorough review. We need that because we're, the city is put in a, play, in a position as opposed to the federal government um, of reviewing this question. We need to be fully informed, okay? Okay, are there any speakers on this? Anything else that we wanna know? No. Okay. Thank you. Chair, can I have a moment? Mm
Commissioner Malton, if you want base plane information because of site slopes, I have that note. Um, the site slopes, I, it, it would be helpful. I mean, the critical building is on facing Main Street. Mm -hmm. So when we tell the DOB, you know, this is the maximum height of the building, it's like a zoning height. Yeah. It's the building height. Right. So we need to know what the base plane was, and this is like the right. maximum height. So we need base plane calculations. We don't have that. No. Okay. While we're at it, we also, need, we also need base plane calculations. Yes, we did. You, did you submit that just now? Because we don't have well, that. Well, the base plane calculations don't coincide with the 26 feet. Right. That's to, that was told to the FAA. So if you could, but then it might be because it's in Queen's datum mm -hmm. and not in mean sea level. So no, if uh, you could give us a chart to explain okay. all that, uh, perhaps it would clarify me. it. The, the uh, Prince feet had a higher elevation. Mm -hmm. They generated their own um, base Arbor plan. Curve. Yeah. yeah to calculate the Prince Street site mm -hmm. building height, and on the Main Street is lower. Mm -hmm. So for the purpose, when the FAA doing the obstruction review, we cannot use both of them. Right. We have to use someone in between. That's what the, that the but severe... But DOB uses both of them. Correct, yes. So that's, and we talk to DOB. We don't actually, we get information from FAA, but we don't give it back to them, right? We give it to the DOB. So. Our resolution will also ultimately speak in terms of DOB zoning language. That's again why we need to understand your base pit plane calculations. Again, in NAVD 88, in average mean, and in Queens data. Okay. And for example, if you were measuring this, the building on Main Street, it looked to me like your street line was 20.54 feet. Correct. But. The FAA is assuming your grade is 26 feet. So I was wondering... Well, the 26 feet is above mean sea level elevation. It's already building the above mean sea level. But that's not just going from Queen's Datum to mean sea level. That's six feet difference. No, that's what the we... We're not using Main Street elevation as the FAA calculation. Okay, then... But what are you using for DOB? Are you using the street line? Are you using two different base planes? Or We're using two different base planes. Yes. Right. Okay. The, the, the 216 feet is only used when we um, deal with the FAA. The 26 feet? 26 feet. Well, whatever you do, you have to explain all this. What the height of the building is as far as the DOB is concerned and how that correlates to the FAA limits and it really will coordinate with what the FAA building height is on Main Street. Because the, the, the grade is six feet different. The revised section had both elevation and the height showed it. What is the height in relation to the main sea level mm -hmm. based on the FAA maximum height. Right. And another is from the base plan with, with regard to the DOV's Queen Stadium yes. and to the top of the height. We had, we had both information available. Okay. So you're still going to be using Queen's data. Is that okay? Yeah. No, right, as okay. long as we have it translated. That's the point. And we can't just leave it alone at Queen's data. We need it for our record. See, because the other part of it is that you wouldn't understand with the subtleties about how the, the, the project is now at the BSA. If there is a movement, if there's any desire to change something at the, on the project, they're going to have to come back to the BSA. So we need to be able to have the, the resolution that's finally written and the drawings that accompany it in a datum that is under current usage by, by all the agencies, right? That's why it always has to be translated also into NAVD 88, even if you start a construction under datum, under so, Queen's datum. Yes, okay. understood. Okay. All right. Need some time. Um, Chair, uh, the applicant has asked that we um, recount, well, that we 
have a submission date uh, in short order. We'll provide whatever the board needs. I think that there's the internal work that we need to do with regards to the datum, which I feel is relatively straightforward. And I'm fairly confident that the building as presented, that nothing will change with the exception of the notations. The actual, you know, any of the diagrams or anything won't change, but the notations will. Um, but the second thing is that, um, is that um, you know, obviously we'll have to talk to an aeronautical specialist with regards to the study um, but you know James has some expertise in this area and we'd like to work with staff to get something back as quickly as possible mm -hmm. so um, if the if the board can right. kind of I, be I'd, rec I'd really recommend if you I know that you're in a rush with this right. project I'd really recommend that if you're in a rush that you work with one of those environment those aeronautical engineers to get these studies done by them because then we won't have to go through sort of a teaching process, Understood. which is very slow and difficult for staff when we already have experts who have made breathtaking presentations to us, um, and it would just be a lot faster. So if you're really in a rush, I think that's the intention. That. Yeah, I think the in <laughs> the intention would be to do that. Um, with this is a, you know, we're, we don't want to uh, risk the overall um, uh, schedule of the project by giving in something that is uh, not to the board's satisfaction. So we intend to aggressively pursue whatever the board requires right now, but we do want to, to be um, scheduled aggressively if possible. Scheduled aggressively. So you didn't even hire the engineer yet. <laughs> We've got a lot of uh, talent on the team. Which means you'll hire the engineer quickly? You bet. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I don't know. Um, I don't know, Ryan. Yeah. Well, I don't know whether you can do this like in a month, for example. Oh, no. I, 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 would, I would expect that we would be able to do it within, I mean, it's going to be measured by weeks. Well, that's a month. <laughs> right, right. I mean... But I don't know... <coughs> I mean, the, in terms of just, like, gross number of cases, June 6th is a possibility. I don't know what it means for you guys. It's not easy to review these to things. To review so these, that's the problem. Um, looking to see what else is on the 6th. Well, if June 6th... The only problem is, is Amsterdam is on the 6th, although we have left on that. It's... Know. It's quite a bit. Yeah. What would what would the uh, June sixth date require as it far as the require, submission? I mean, under normal circumstances, it would require submission by June May seventeenth. So that's only two weeks. Um, that's perfect. These are. I know it's perfect for you, but I having seen these studies, um, they're not simple studies that these engineers do. We understand. Right. So I just uh, I just I don't um. Think that that's actually. And your well, statement oh, and your too. West 19th um, Street is on that that day as well. That's that should go swimmingly well, <laughs> uh, and should not require. May, we've made we've read, we've just as a side matter we've we've revised that proposal <laughs> to be more to the board's liking. So uh, things should go well. That I, may I may I have one more moment, please. Yeah. Our problem is a very full calendar and an inability of the board to review the materials. That's the. Complex material. Yeah, and then it's sort of the next thing to do the 27th. Because the 20th is. 27th? Yeah, because the 20th is slammed. And what's the 27th guy? How many? It, only 15, but Commissioner Allen Brown is now back. Oh, she's not there. Yeah, so we've been sort of. Oh, but this isn't. This isn't with it, with it doesn't require her. Yeah, yeah so okay. So that would be the <laughs> so, so 27th is really the best, right? It would be the. Be, the because, yeah. Oh, you won't. Oh, it you're not before the 14th. No, you're you're the leaving. June oh, you're leaving in, in yeah. July. <laughs> okay. You don't. So I, I would. Yeah, yeah. You don't no, get no, to no. move your retirement. No yeah. early retirement. <laughs> no early retirement. <laughs> what? Wait, what's this? <laughs> uh, no one ran that by us. <laughs> but you're going to review the four surfaces and, oh, no, and no, discuss them in your statement. Right. Correct. Yeah. Clearly. Okay. So what did? So Chair, we we don't want to risk um, missing a submission date. So good answer. So, good answer. So <laughs> June twenty seventh would be the best. That way it would give us time to really review complex material and more realistic time frame on contacting the engineer, getting them to do the work, all that stuff. Assuming they don't take vacations. Okay. So. Um, that would mean a submission on June 7th, but given the givens, you could be a little late on that. 
Okay, so potential submission on June 7th with some leeway and a continuing hearing date on June 26th. Um, June 27th. June uh, 27th. Can you give me one moment? I apologize. Chair, uh, we face some serious constraints on the project, and um, and given our existing relationships with the aviation community, we feel confident we can provide the board with the study as well as the revised materials that are required uh, in mid-May. So um, to the extent that we can take the earlier date, understanding that the risk is on us to the extent we cannot provide those materials, uh, it would be a, a matter of a, a great courtesy if we were able to get that date. All right. All right. But if you don't submit. We understand. Yeah. You yeah. have until, what did I say, May 17 to submit. No extensions on No extensions. Because we have to review. We need time to yeah. review and we Correct. Have a lot of cases. Understood. So May 17, or you have to adjourn and submit for the next year. That will be a real drag. Correct. Yeah, by the way, that could be a worse drag because then it's too late to submit in time for the June 27th hearing. Yeah. Um, so you might get pushed off even further by the reality of how our submission deadlines work. Not to mention that there's no room left on the calendar by then because we, other, we also have other hearings in May that beg similarly and then fill up the June 27th calendar. So beware that this might push you off till the end of July. That's called gambling. <laughs> <laughs> so, and since you haven't even contacted the engineer yet, you don't know his or her schedule, um, you might be committing to someone's schedule that they can't live up to. I wouldn't do it <laughs> in your place. Uh, I think I need another 60 seconds, and we should have an answer. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Because of which? Oh, because you thought there'd be more testimony? Yeah. 
There was a lot of tests. There was like 25. They were very efficient. They listen to each other and then they get up and say, I think it was all my neighbors. I just want to have this. Yeah. It's a very educated crowd. Yeah, oh my gosh. Yes, yeah. they were. Yeah, they were. Yeah, okay. very Smart. educated. Yeah. And, yeah. and really interesting, different observers. Very little repetition. Yeah. yeah, and the whole traffic thing was, was extremely important. Yeah, yeah. And it's more the higher meeting. None of the studies was that at all. Yeah. Given that this is what such a high. Oh. <laughs> the fact that this is a high accident problem. Yes, it's a yeah, huge crash site. Yeah. Yeah. He never looks at any of this. Crash site? Yeah, only oh, yeah. yeah. um, He just would ever look at anything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 All really there wasn't one person who was just like, Chair, we'd like to take the June submission date with the understanding that we intend to submit everything to the board's full satisfaction and hope for a closing grant on that eventual vote. decision date. Closing vote. Mm -hmm. Correct. Good. Good decision on the part of all people. Think Thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm. So submission is June 4, uh, sorry, one, two, seven. June 7. For June 27. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Chair. This Great. concludes Thank the you. public hearing for May 2nd, 2017. Oh, all this time it was not on. <laughs> all this time this was not on. Really? <laughs> yeah. And here, like. <laughs>